So we're here with the Rohini. Hi. How are you? I'm Matt Gerber, the CEO for Rohini. So what are we looking at here? So what you're seeing here is what looks like a little tiny grain of sand that's actually a micro LED. So you've, you've seen and heard advertisements and, and press around micro and mini LED TVs and TV backlights. And what we've got here is the actual micro LED component itself. So you work in the micro LED business. We, we do. Which we, is uh, like the big hype, right? Everybody's talking about the next thing is micro it's LED. It's the thing right now. And uh, we have a suite of technologies that allows designers to create impossible products using these very, very tiny components. So uh, what, what do we see here? So what you can see here is this is actually a picture of that micro LED that's on this card, but it's under a magnifier. You can see the LED itself and you can see the, the uh, anode and the cathode where the electricity passes through it. So people read, read about these things and they see the actual products, but they don't get to see these tiny little components that make up these products. And uh, then you, uh, the, you'd want to not just have one, you want to put them together and like that, make big displays? That's right. The whole key to enabling these displays and these other products that you're going to see here is taking these really, really tiny devices and placing a lot of them in a small space at a very high rate of speed and very accurately. And we figured out a way to do that. And in figuring out a way to do that, we've enabled all of these new innovative products. So um, you have a bunch of demos here? We do, we do, let's take you over. And this is for you, Thanks. hang on to that. So these are great examples of what the technology is capable of enabling. And you can see when you take a lot of these mini LEDs, micro LEDs, and you put them in a small space, you can create really innovative lighting products, but you can also create products that are animated. And you see motion, because you can address each one of these. It's, a, it's an individual electrical component, and you can address each one individually, and so you can create motion and movement, and they're also flexible. So uh, this is mostly about lighting? No, this no. area. We're just this area. It's just a good example of what the technology enables. Like this, this is actually flexible light thread. Hey, on this side, yeah. So light thread. So what you see here is actually flexible light thread. You can see the thread is going through the needle and the fabric, and those are mini LEDs on what's essentially very, very thin and flexible substrate. So what um, what would be the use for putting in the micro LEDs in this fashion there? At some point you can see maybe one day you and I will be wearing clothing that we can illuminate with signage or signals. So uh, when people talk about smart clothing, there'll be micro LEDs on them? Micro LEDs, absolutely. How soon? Uh, probably in the next five years would so, be my guess. And um, what are we looking at here? So that's just an example of a display backlight. So this is just an example of a display backlight, and you can see uh, this is a very thin, very flexible substrate, and it would sit behind an LCD, and each one of those mini LEDs is addressable individually. So it allows you to create an LCD display that's thinner, brighter, and has better contrast ratio than a standard LCD. So um, the business of a micro LED could be for LCD backlights. It could be, it's for multiple things. Let me show you some of the things that are uh, very broad applications of this technology and some of the things that our technology enables. So this is, this is a joint venture or products from a joint venture that we have with Magna. Magna is a very large automotive uh, company and you can see examples of the application of these, these technologies to things like taillights and um, automated uh, displays in, in automotive applications. All right, so what is this display here? This is, this is an example of what a curved surface emitter might look like. And this, is a, this would be applicable to any surface you'd want to light up in a vehicle. You could use that kind of a surface in a taillight as an example. Or you could use it in front of a vehicle in a grill for branding purposes. And this is the taillight. This is an example of a taillight. This is also another example of a taillight. It's, it's, is it, is, does it make it possible to have 
ultra bright tea lights you, 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 br brighter than other tech? Several benefits. It's thinner, it's brighter, and it's more power efficient than what's out there today. And because it's flexible and you can animate, you can make the design much, much more interesting. As you can see here, you can't do that with an ordinary tail light, whereas when you see those kinds of designs, you can do that with a micro mini LED based tail light. So it's, uh, it's important for safety. Tim, can you turn this one around? Sure. Yeah. So this is another example of a tail light assembly. Whoa, that's bright. Dynamic lighting. Very bright. This way you're sure nobody's gonna um, rear end your, your car. Yes, yes. But you can also make it unique so they know that it's your car. Nice, so you can make uh, all kinds of designs. That's right. So how far is that in the future? Are you, is your technology shipping in re some, some of these kind of products? Um, we're currently quoting these products to different uh, customers, and we're building up demos right now for, um, for show to the upper management at the OEMs. All right. And uh, you have more? Yes, come on over. More demos this way? I want to show you... Um, These are products from Lumi. Yeah. Lumi is another joint venture between Rohini and a company called Koja. And Lumi's focus is on keyboard backlights. So these are notebook computer keyboard backlights, as well as logos for uh, things like notebooks and tablets. And these are examples of keyboard backlights. And what's, what's innovative about these is in, you can see these are extremely thin and each micro or mini LED is addressable. And so this, this technology allows a designer to do things with a, a keyboard that couldn't previously be done. If you move over to the left here, you can see this is a great example where you can see each of these keys, a key would be sitting above each of these LEDs. If you wanted different keys, different colors, if you wanted your keyboard to automate, if you wanted your keyboard to message you, this is capable of doing that. You can't do that with today's technology. And you can see how, how thin the actual membrane is that these, these mini LEDs are mounted on. So individually addressable, the other ones are not on the market. Let, yeah, let me introduce you to, to Kevin. Kevin is the, the CEO of the Lumi Joint Venture. Uh, so how about these speakers right there? What do you do with well, those? So with these samples, what we're trying to show is the indirect lighting or the loop lighting. In essence, what we can do is with this technology, we can implement this technology in very many different shapes and forms. You can have a curvatures, or you can have uh, the bright enough light that hits onto the table that you see indirectly, or you can have the you know the, the regular white backlight or the LED or the RGB white RGB animated backlight, you know, on the keyboard. All right, so yet another we do, piece for we them. Do. We have one, one more JV's uh, product that uh, we want to show you. So this is, this is our most recent joint venture. It's with uh, BOE. BOE is one of the largest display manufacturers. And uh, we formed this joint venture about a year ago, and we formally announced that it's now up and running last week. And what you see here, we have two firsts that you see here. So let's change uh, them right there. What are we looking at here? So we, we, have, we have two firsts that you're seeing here. Yeah. These are um, video wall components. Yeah. Yeah. So these, these are video wall modules. Yeah. And the first here is these are video wall modules on glass. So there's a lot of, a lot of um, press and a lot of publicity at CES this year on direct emission video walls. What you see here are direct emission video walls on glass, which allows for the technology to be um, produced for the masses. So that we have a much more efficient way of manufacturing this technology in that the LEDs are placed directly on glass. So this is a pretty big size. How yes. big does it get? So these are modules and you can theoretically make as big a TV as you want. So we, we can scale these from a single module like you see over there 
to yeah. as big as that back panel. So uh, let's take this one out of there. So this micro LED module. That's right. So what's the potential pixel density or resolutions and all that stuff? So let me also introduce you to, to Palin. Palin is the CEO of a BOE Pixie joint venture. Hey. Mm -hmm. So actually, this module is our uh, maybe the 0 0.5, 0 0.9 inch uh, the pitch, 0 0.9 millimeter pitch, the mini LED module. So we assembled this module to the, the big size, like something like this. And this one is a glass base. So, you know, Bill is the, uh, the biggest uh, LCD display maker in all of the world. So our expertise, we can build uh, many devices on the glass. So this one is a, uh, so this one is a, or maybe our first demo for the 0.9 inch, 0.9 millimeter. So, so this means this could be for uh, digital signage or for sure, sure, absolutely. it's not for home TV use. Eventually, will be for yeah. home TV use. Yes. For home TV, would be uh, you would need a higher pixel density or in the future. Yes. Future, yes. yes. So that's also on the roadmap. Unless, unless you want a really, really big TV in your house. Oh yeah, how big? Yeah. No limit. No limit. 200 inch, uh, 8K. Yeah, 8K mm -hmm. for maybe 200, yeah, 210, something like this. Right, so you sit a w a way back and then, uh, how, how's it gonna be the the contrast? The contrast uh, currently is uh, 1,000, one, one, one half thousand. So in the future, maybe we can achieve to the 5,000. 5,000. So that means uh, the blacks are totally black, but how much? How, how about oh, the? You mean the contrast ratio, right? Yeah. Oh, or contrast ratio should be maybe a million or more. Million, yes. Million to one. Million at one. least. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean the brightness we can achieve to the yes. five five thousand. Yes. Yeah. All right. Fully turning off the. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, Pixie, what what's the the idea about the name Pixie? We like it. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, and it's actually a, a little bit of playing words in that because it is a, 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 a video wall or LCD application. You can think about things like Pixel and, and those little LEDs we sprinkle pixie dust, the magic that helps create these really innovative products. So we, we like it. It's, we think it's a great name for the, the JV. Nice. So potentially... Um, uh, Micro LEDs is going to be a big part of the future of, of TV market? I, I think they're going to be a big part of the picture of, of any consumer electronics product because they really enable these products. They're, they're, when you look at the differences between traditional package LEDs and mini and micro LEDs, they're, they're significantly smaller in size, they consume less power. And by putting more mini or micro LEDs in the same amount of space, you can create a much brighter product. So it really enables a completely new generation of products. All right. So um, uh, Rohini is a uh, base. Did, did, can we turn this one on? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Some, some yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So there's yeah. another demo coming up right here. Yeah. So um, Rohini is based in, in, in Idaho. So. Rohini is an interesting company in that we're a very small group of nonconformist, crazy, innovative engineers in a place called Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, which isn't known to be a mecca of high tech, but we really like it there because it's a quiet place and it allows us to do what we do best, which is really think about problems. We love to solve problems that people say are impossible to solve. And the reason we focus on mini and micro LEDs is our founders about eight years ago saw these components and the feedback that they got from the industry was the components are too small and too difficult to place accurately and they realized if we could find a way to take those components place them accurately at a high rate of speed we could allow designers to create products like this and completely change the game when it came to building products with lighting. So um, how do you do this pick and placing? So you have some 
That's it's a very strange technology. To, it's of, very small. Part, part of our secret sauce, and we, we've got about 100 patents that cover everything from placing these components through the actual products themselves. But the summary of how we do it is we take these individual mini or micro LEDs and we place them very accurately at a very high rate of speed. And that's what enables us to build these products economically. So is it, does it have to do with what's called mass transfer or is it different? So we use, we use a different process. We, the, the thing about what we build, because we're building lighting products or we're building video components where you, you need to know that every single pixel works, every single die works. We actually place each and every die individually, but we do it at a very high rate of speed. And that allows us to do two things. We know that the die we place is good, and we know that the die we place has been placed accurately and works. Because as you can see with these products, if you're building a keyboard backlight, you can't have a single die that's out. A lot of these mass transfer processes, they assume you're gonna get fallout, and so they design around a certain amount of fallout. You can get away with that if you're transferring millions of, of, of pixels, you can't get away with that with this kind of a product. So, um, there's some kind of robot somewhere that takes every LEDs and yes. puts them... Yes, there is. And you can put millions of them on the display? Yes, you can. And you already have it working? We do. We actually have six lines, high-speed lines in operation in various places around the world. Obviously, some of them are at these joint ventures. We've got a line in Detroit. We've got a line in uh, Wuzhang, China, and we've got a line in Beijing. But to, for this to take over the whole market, you need to be able to, there needs to be so much scale. Like that's right. It's like uh, yeah. you want to do billions per day of that, that's right. pixels. We, we, we think, we can, we, think we can do that from a couple of different perspectives. One is when you look at the partners we have here with us today, we've got the biggest players in their respective industries. So Koja, our partner in Lumi, is the largest supplier of keyboard membrane switches, so perfect partner for keyboard backlights and logos. Magna is a global company with, uh, I think, 180,000 employees, uh, one of the leaders in automotive, and so we've got the right partner in automotive. And BOE, as the largest display company, is the right partner to scale with automotive. And then on the equipment side, we've partnered with one of the leading providers of semiconductor placement equipment to build the robot. So we're positioned today to scale the business, and there's no limit to how quickly and, and how much we can scale at this point. How much of this technology do you manufacture yourself or how much of it is just licensing to other companies to they, they make it? So this is where your point is very valid. The market is moving now and we knew we needed to scale quickly. So the partners you see here today with BOE, Magna and, and Koja with these joint ventures, they help scale by building products and they help scale by taking products to market. And then our machine manufacturing partner actually builds the machinery that these joint ventures use. So Rohini as a company, like I mentioned to you before, we're innovators, a bunch of creative engineers, and so we're the core inventors and the core enablers, but we've partnered with these companies to help take the technology to market as quickly as possible. And here so is another uh, BOE Pixel, Pixie demo? Yes. Is it the backlight? So, so, so this is... So, so what do we see here? So this, this is also a first in that this is a 75 inch LCD, okay. 8K TV yes. with a mini LED backlight with 10,000 dimming zones. So you see an extremely crisp picture, contrast ratios are very high and it's also very bright. <coughs> 10,000 dimming, dimming zones. zones. Dimming zone, yes. So this is micro LED or mini LED? It's, this is a mini yeah, LED backlight. Yes. So, um, because um, I saw some interesting, uh, BOE is doing also with Hisense, the dual layer. Yeah. But that's, um, maybe one argument could be that doing mini LED or micro LED is brighter? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Yes. So actually, you know very well about the, the BOE product, right? So that is a dual panel. So the two panel. But the brightness is, uh, compared with our mini LED backlight, the brightness is very poor. 
but it's a different prototype, it's different, you know, the different, product. Different uh, application, <coughs> yes, different application. Different product. Different, different product. <laughs> but in the future, I th we think the mini RD backlight, or maybe in the future, micro RD backlight will be the chain. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So 10,000 is a lot. So that means the blacks are mostly totally black? It does, yeah. Similar it's a beautiful, beautiful picture. Yes. And um, how would you say it compares with OLED? So actually, we think the, the mechanism is the same. So we can, we can shut down the LED totally, right? We can, we can achieve the pure black. So you know, the, compared with the OLED, the mini LED has, has very higher reliability than the OLED. How about, uh, you know, there's like uh, issues on OLED with like burn in, mm -hmm. something like that. Is there any chance that this might have something similar or it's just going to work forever? Forever, yes. It's yep. not going to have this kind of problem. Like the, the LEDs don't stop working. Yep. They all just continue yep. forever. Yeah, the, the beauty of this technology is, is all of the <coughs> componentry is, is proven. Mm -hmm. So the LEDs themselves, the substrates, there's, there's no new materials, there's no new uh, substantially different architectures here. We're putting together components in a way that haven't been put together before, which is what makes this unique. And because we're using established componentry, it's extremely reliable. So is this the cutting edge of mini LEDs? Yes. <coughs> there's no like more uh, mini LED density in the market or demonstration or anything? Well, I, think, I, I think right now what you're looking at is a first in that this, this does have 10,000 dimming zones and it's a first for a mini LED backlit LCD. We're, we're going to continue to innovate mm -hmm. and you will see additional innovations in the future which may mean higher densities for dimming zones, higher densities for, for mini LEDs, greater dimming zones. We're going to continue to push the technology because we think it has a lot of headroom. So uh, it sounds awesome to have an 8K 75 inch, 75 inch with a 10,000 mini LED. Sounds awesome. And how bright does it get? Is there talk about how, how many nits? So actually we can achieve to the 2,000 nits. 2,000 nits. Yes. Is there quantum dots no. on this yeah, no. also? Uh, it can, right? We it's can, totally yes. Yeah, yeah. So not it on, could... Not on this not sample. On this one, not on this, on this sample, sample, but yeah. it could have... So it could be the ultimate TV right there mm -hmm. on the market. But so how soon? We think so. How yeah. soon could it be uh, mass production? Is it 2020? Yes. We're, we're, we're talking to we're customers talking. now yes. at this point. So the, the mm -hmm. JV, it's just launched, uh, formally launched a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're engaged with all, uh, quite a few customers right now. So our goal is to bring it to market as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So the the whole system and the pick and play system and everything is reliable to mass produce these. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the same system, the same system that will be used to build these products is already in production at Lumi. So Lumi is shipping uh, production mass production high volume product to customers right now. How about the price? Is it going to add a lot of price to have this? So many mini LEDs behind here, or can you talk about that? So, so we don't set the prices. The actual OEM would set the prices. We think that the, for what the technology delivers, it it'll be a very compelling offering. Because I think when, uh, for example, LG talks about their 8K uh, 88 inch, they say something like thirty or forty thousand dollars. So hopefully, you you can make you can I bring think, something cheaper. I think it'll be a little less. Than that. That'd be nice. All right. Uh, so if we go into micro LEDs on something like this, how many zones could it be? Could you have like up to mil like millions zones or something? Theoretically, you could. Mm -hmm. I think at some point you would see a transition from an LCD with a mini LED backlight to a direct emission panel. Because if you got the densities high enough, the economics would dictate moving to a direct emission display like the one behind you. So I think there is, there is an inflection point in, in the technology. Um, we're a ways away from that inflection point at this point. So there is a more uh, higher pixel density on the LCD technology 
there's more co color saturation or uh, compared to this or what we, how would how would you compare the state of the art right now i would defer to if, if i'm not sure you can you want to comment I don't know if it's, uh, on makes sense uh, no yeah uh, but it, the brightness is not as as high or how high does it you get can, you can get much brighter on yeah, a direct emission yeah. panel than you than you can on an lcd an lcd there's a there's a loss as it's as the light's traveling through the panel uh versus the direct emission where you're collecting directly from the led uh the offset is uh you have to put a lot of pixels very close together for that versus an lcd you know you know the the question about mini versus micro on an lcd is a little bit uh of a misnomer because the pixel density at 10,000 ohms, you're still seven millimeters apart, and that's a mini LED. You don't necessarily need to go to a micro LED to get much closer. Uh, so the benefit's not quite there. The goal there is to get thinner and to get get high brightness of very thin. Uh, with the directly direct emissive product, you get very very bright because you're you don't have that layer that's absorbing some of the light in between, and so there's a lot to be said for getting much brighter in that in that case. So you have the all the advantage of the contrast of so very very bright. Uh, blacks are true black because you're turning it all the way off, uh, but uh, you have the offshoot of it's more challenging to, uh, to manufacture because you have to put a lot of pixels very, very close together in order to have that, that truly uh, you know, finite uh, image that you're looking at. So maybe a state-of-the-art uh, LCD right now, they talk about two, 3,000 nits, maybe 4,000, something like that, right? How yeah. bright do you think it, this could get? It oh, could be more. It, it can be a lot more. I mean, a lot more. Because if, if theoretically we've talked about six, six to ten thousand nits, but at some point you create so much heat that it becomes impractical, but right? You have to realize that when you, if you have an LCD that's generating four thousand nits through the, through the, through the LCD layer, you know, a pretty significant sixty, eighty percent of that light is from the backlight. It's already being absorbed, blocked by the LCD. I mean, so you know, the backlight is generating a lot more than that. And that's the, the LEDs themselves. I mean, so you could get much brighter, but I don't know if you'd want to look at it because they, they, it becomes the eye strain problem is, yeah, you could get super bright, but I don't know if you really want to watch it. So, so um, how many LEDs do you need to be allowed to call it a mini LED? Uh, this is 10,000, it sounds like a lot, but I guess some companies have less. And they still call it mini LED? Yeah, when at least Rohini's perspective, the difference between mini LEDs and micro LEDs really revolves for us around the size of the LED itself. Typically anything above 50 microns square up to about three to 500 microns square, we'd call a mini LED. And anything 50 microns square and under, we would call a micro LED. And the other big difference you see is typically mini LEDs will have a substrate. Whereas as the LEDs get smaller and smaller, it doesn't make sense to have a substrate. So you'll see those micro LEDs will typically be an epitaxial layer only, which is the emitter layer. So very different architecture for the LEDs as well between mini and micro. That's, that's the difference in our opinion. So when you talk about BOE as the uh, largest LCD capacity in the world, mm -hmm. is millions and millions and millions of displays and micro uh, mini LED backlights is going to be able to keep up with the demand and yes. there's enough LEDs in the world I don't know how, how does it get made it's it's a great thing for the LED business because it's one of the next big applications they're looking at so there'll be many yes trillions of LEDs coming yes. out yes. these kinds of products and 2020 we can, we can see this one maybe in 2020 maybe like I said, we're talking to yeah. customers now, so customer demand will really dictate when we'll see the actual products in the market. Uh, but we, we'd like to see that happen as soon as possible. Uh, is, is it possible I can ask, how do um, competitors potentially do Mini LED? Is it a completely different way than this? or uh, really don't have much insight on how they're doing things. We know how we're doing them, and we think we've got a process that's very efficient and very effective. All right, so cool. So looking forward to more, awesome. more of these displays. Well, thanks. Thanks for stopping by.